Hello, this is Dawn Altman from ECG Guru. Today's video is on how to make a laddergram. Why would you want to make a laddergram? Well, a laddergram shows conduction through the heart, including conduction that is concealed from the surface ECG tracing. A laddergram can help you test your hypothesis about an arrhythmia, and a laddergram can help you describe your understanding of an arrhythmia to others. A simple laddergram has three tiers, one for the atria, one for the AV junctional area, and one for the ventricles. Let's start by diagramming one cardiac cycle. First, find where the P wave begins. I've placed a line at that point. We don't put that on the laddergram, but I put it there to show you where the P wave begins. When you find that spot, place a dot at the top of the atrial tier. This represents a sinus node pacemaker. Now find where AV conduction begins, usually around the top of the P wave. Draw a line from the dot to the beginning of the AV junctional tier at the point where AV conduction begins. Next, find where AV conduction ends, which is the beginning of the QRS complex. Draw a line from the AV junctional tier to the beginning of the ventricular tier at this point. Now find where ventricular conduction ends at the end of the QRS. Draw a line from the beginning of the QRS to the end of it in the ventricular tier. Now you have successfully diagrammed the conduction of a normal sinus beat. A lot of people find it easier to do the atrial tier first and then the ventricular tier and then just connect them for the AV junctional tier. When an ectopic impulse originates in the ventricle, it's shown like this. The sinus node fires in a regular fashion. We can use the laddergram to show where those P waves are, even the ones we can't see. Some of the P waves have fallen into the ST segment of the PVCs. The ECG isn't able to show them well, although there may be a little hint there of a bulge, but the laddergram shows them very well. This laddergram helps us explain the origin of a compensatory pause. The sinus P wave that happens during the ST segment of the PVC is blocked from entering the ventricles by the refractory state of the ventricles due to that PVC. They're still busy recovering from the PVC. The PVC conducts backward or in a retrograde fashion and it's blocked from going into the atria by that P wave or that atria for the same reason the atrial conduction has made the atria refractory. So the two of them stop each other and we see a normal P wave but no retrograde P wave. In addition, the timing of the SA node is not affected. So the next beat or the next sinus beat occurs right on time if we consider the P wave we can't see. Now let's try a fun one. In this strip we can easily see all the P waves, so we're going to mark each one with a dot at the top of the atrial tier. And I notice right away that they're very regular. Okay. To make it a little bit easier, I'm going to mark the ventricles second, the QRSs. And they're also easy to see, but what I notice right away is there seem to be more P waves than there are QRS complexes. When I connect the dots for the AV junctional tier, I notice something strange. The first line that I made was fairly steep. The second one was more sloped, and then the third one is blocked. Then I go back to a steep slope, which means this event is happening quicker, and more sloped slope, which is um, slower, and then the third one is blocked. So again, steep takes longer, and then I presume this one was probably blocked. To make this laddergram more instructive, we've added these orange lines at the bottom, which indicate the approximate refractory period of each of these 
QRS complexes. In other words, the ventricles are refractory for a time period after each QRS. During that time, a P wave cannot normally penetrate and make a Q another QRS. So the second P wave we see here has arrived, fortunately for it, after the refractory period is over and it has produced another QRS. That has a refractory period, but the sad little third P wave has landed in it and has not been able to produce a, P a QRS, so we show a blocked impulse. Now the next one shows fairly normal conduction. The next one shows prolongation through the AV junction, but still able to make a QRS. And then the next one falls into that refractory period and is blocked. So this not only shows us a classic second degree block type 1 or Winkybach conduction, but it also shows why it happens. As the AV node or AV junction tier progressively prolongs its conduction time, the next P wave lands in a place where it cannot conduct. Constructing ladder grams becomes a lot easier with practice. You'll find them very helpful as you learn more advanced concepts in arrhythmias. Many authors use ladder grams to explain advanced concepts. Thanks for watching and I hope this has been helpful for you.